So here I am back on our domain controller, dc.company.pri. I'm here mainly because it's where I have access to the Group Policy Management Console, because I want to show you that I've created a GPO here, haven't made any changes to any settings just yet. But uh, this GPO can be the location where we go about configuring audit policy, either the traditional or the advanced audit policy. Let me right click in here, go to edit, and then here within the GPME, we're going to go through and configure some of these policies for the machines that would receive this GPO. Now, first and foremost, let's come down here under Windows Settings and then Security Settings, where we can take a look at what are the old school policies, the original nine audit policies that have been around since more or less the beginning of Windows. These you'll find here under Security Settings, Local Policies, and then down here under Audit Policy, and you'll see those nine that exist. These are very coarse in the amount of detail as far as the differentiation between them. So when you choose to lo audit logon events, you're going to audit all the logon events. If you choose process tracking, you're going to choose to audit every single process on every machine receiving this GPO. And in every case, whenever you go about configuring these, you can configure them to turn them on and choose merely whether you're auditing for success or failure events. Now, all the information here that's gathered is going to go into the security log on the machine that receives this GPO. So as you can imagine, that could potentially create a very large security log on these machines. Now, it's for this reason why Microsoft has actually a couple of operating systems ago included some more granularity with these different policies down here at the bottom with what are called the Advanced Audit Policy Configuration. Now, advanced audit policies are designed to do exactly as I've said, to just break apart the, the very long list of those original nine into a more granular series of subcategories that help you better just tailor out all the unnecessary stuff that you would otherwise be capturing. And so for our example before with account logons, when we choose to enable account logons, the auditing that we're actually enabling is one or more of these four that exist in this list of subcategories. So credential validation, Kerberos authentication service, the service ticket operations, and other account logon events. Now, obviously, if you're going to use these, there's a little bit more sleuthing around to try to figure out exactly what these things do. Without that, you may just end up turning them all on, which has the equivalence of just doing exactly what the old different auditing selections did. Now, if you do, however, choose to use the advanced audit policies as opposed to the traditional audit policies, I want to direct your attention to right here, this specific group policy setting that says, if you want to use advanced audit policies, you need to go over to this other location to turn on force audit policy subcategory settings to override audit policy category settings. That's found under local policies and security options. So if I pop back up here, I go to local policies and the security options. It's down here under audit where we can choose this item right here. Turning this on, enabling it, allows us to then use the subcategories that are down here at the bottom. Now, for each of these, you're going to have different kinds of subcategories. Obviously, the ones that exist for log on, log off are going to be different than those that exist for system or object access. But in every case, all we needed to do now to identify that we wanted to actually gather this information is to come down to some location here. For example, um, log on, log off is a great example, since I happen to be on it, and choose to audit just perhaps logons. Here I can choose, all right, well, if I want to audit logons, I can choose success or failure of those logons to just, again, give me exactly the information that I'm looking for. This information, as I said, will go into that security log on the machine where this policy, where this GPO is actually applied. Now, in order for a machine to receive this, we would have to refresh group policy on the machine, which I can do by bringing open a command prompt here and then running gp, uh, gp update slash force. So let's do that here so that we can force the refresh of group policy that we just created. And then once we've done that, I want to show you the little command, the audit poll command, that you can use to identify where these subcategories have been enabled and where you may actually want to enable them not using group policy, maybe for machines that exist in a work group or those that you don't necessarily want to apply these using a group policy object. So let me clear the screen here and show you that the audit poll command has actually a variety of different switches that we can take a look at. There is get, there is list, both of which will identify which policy elements exist on this machine, as well as set, which allows us to then set that audit policy. I can back up and restore the audit policy to and from a file, which actually becomes handy if you come back up here to audit policies, where you can identify exactly what kinds of settings you would like to then import into the group policy that you may have had on a single machine. 
So this gives you a little flexibility here in maybe trying out some of these settings first on a machine to see if they're exactly what you need, and then importing the settings over here into the GPME in order to then disseminate those to all the other machines in your environment. Now, going back here to Audit Paul, I just want to show you a couple of the ways in which Audit Paul can be useful. The, the main way is actually getting the different categories and subcategories that may or may not have been enabled. So Audit Paul and then Get Category. The category that we enabled just a second ago was Log On, Log Off. So here we can see that in this, this, this category and in this, these subcategories here, these are the settings that are currently being audited. So log ons are for success and failure, log offs are for success, and so on. Now you can get further information too if you do audit poll slash list slash category. This will give you a list of the categories, and then from there you can dig even further to identify within those categories exactly what the other subcategories may be.